Keep busting. Just checking through a bit of an interview between Britain's favourite daytime jock Wayne Carr, currently upholding a job at Radio HMV, and your favourite man Peter Stringfellow. Just see, have you got that on the tape? Hang on. What gets me about Kenneth Clark? The man's is just wrinkles and no face. That sort of thing tonight between nine and ten o'clock. Actually, it's scandalous. It's completely scandalous. Well, what about Portillo? Yeah, well, Portillo. Does he need a lady? Uh, well, I mean, you know. You get the picture. Shall we have record number two? Right, in tonight's gibbering wreck, cheerful toss from friend of 1FM, Peter Stringfellow. We hope he'll be your chum by the end of the night, too. There's the car quiz. The prize for that is a driving lesson with John Peel. Kitty's outing. And here in the studio, we're very privileged to have Phil Collins. He's crawling around the floor in a nappy. He's got an enormous eight-foot tongue on his back. He looks very much like a giant, soft kind of tortoise. He's whimpering soundlessly in the corner. He's really just crawling around, doing very little else. He keeps trying to raise himself up on the single foot that's growing out of his stomach. But he can't make it. The tongue is far too heavy. Weight of Mick McManus. And in the news tonight, Edwina Curry recalls her operation to have her antlers removed. I was five years old when I had mine done. And it was when it's all numb and horrible. No Peter Benham tonight, by the way. He's still in hospital after last week. Didn't stop him winning the Perrier. So tonight, the Wayne Carr interview is with King Prong, Peter Stringfellow. Peter Stringfellow, welcome. Ah, uh, my pleasure. My Hi pleasure. there. Now, um, Stringfellow's the name. Was it simply the name? Well, you mean, uh, was I born with it? Yes. No, I'm... no, the, the clubs. We're talking about a man whose uh, name is synonymous with uh, fun and uh, clubbing. Uh -huh. Stringfellow's the name of the club. Was it simply the name? Uh, you mean simply the name that made the success? Okay, well, listen, I guess we'll come back to that if you're having difficulty. Question two... What about the name Stringfellow? Shares 60% of the letters of the word nightclub. Is that why you named your club Stringfellows? Okay, no, let me explain that. When I first started in 1960, number one, Stringfellow didn't have any glamour in those days. Apart Some... from having written uh, Hiawatha. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. And the different range of people you attract, a huge range of people, don't you? I do that deliberately. Yeah, from because... Sloan's, you've got the Jet Set, uh, yeah. rock stars, the Plunties, the Ciders, the Riders, and the Hex, they're all there. Yeah, I mean, Why? you know, it, my, my door is very wide. If you make the effort and you look good, you can come in. Because basically, we're all of one type, you know? Uh, and I find it not, nothing more boring in a nightclub than when it gets very narrow. If you, I personally wouldn't be comfortable uh, in, a narrow in, club. in a narrow club. Because where... you're a wide kind of person yourself? Yeah, I think so, you know. All right, so say I am a typical 90s person, right? Say I'm a Plunty or a Cider, I come in. Do you say Plunty's over there, Cider's over there, Hex over here, Jet Set over there? Or can no, you... but very, very quickly, everybody knows where to stand in their own patch. But you see a Plunty come into the club, he's looking a little bit down. Would you actually go up to him? Yes, I do that. What would you say to a Plunty who came in? I just say, hey, nice to have you in. Welcome to the club. Let me get you a drink. Once they're in the club, I'll look after him. What are those um, sequin Heck hats? That would yeah. be okay. Uh, it depends how he's wearing it, how, how the rest of it look. What kind of cuisine do you give him? Well, in the early days, we used to have, of course, like everywhere else in London, you had your menu in French. You had your menu in? Oh, yeah. Do you like uh, violin players? Do I like who? Well, you say you had your menu in. Are violin players the sort of people that you actually have in? V Vinnie Jones comes in and he's a great guy. He's in it violin. You just let him sing a He's not a violin player, player, is he? No, would, yeah. you, do you have, would you have you had your menu in and Stefan Grappelli say? Yeah, why not? I saw this guy at the weekend. I was expecting to have my head blown off. Yeah. It was the one of the worst kicks I've seen. The only exciting bits were the starts of the songs. Everything else was just bass and drums, and him wandering around like Christopher Biggins on steroids. Okay, I'd like to put in a request. Which one? Well, it's a man with a surname Z double A S. Zass. Oh, yeah. First name, Doug. Yes. Doug Zass. See you in an hour. See you, mate. Okay. Oh, yeah, the 1FM sound advisors. 
they've been pulling the records which we should play to you. Any update on the combined results of their wisdom? Ah, part three. Listen, let's talk about Cabaret of Angels. I love to talk about the Cabaret Okay, but first, actually, let's not, because it's a little bit uh, cheap to be so eager to plug yourself. Let's talk about your early life. Now, you lived in a one-up, one-down. Yes, I did. Now, that's a kind of micro-habitation. Can you imagine anything smaller and yet still possible? No. We've been doing some concern features and uh, did actually speak to somebody who lived in a one-up, no-down, which was pretty unfortunate. Yeah, I think that's a terrible thing. That should be stopped immediately. In fact, there's a lot of things should be knocked down. Yeah, and in fact, you know, there's one up, no downs. You get the, the horrible effect of the planes flying underneath you. Yeah, well, you know, I've had a few of those too. Right. Now, let's go from that kind of micro-habitation right to the Cabaret of Angels. And before we get into that, may I say that it is great that someone actually had the guts to come out and put a ban on the, you know, the fat chicks. Because uh, you get a lot of grief for that, and I can't see why. But it got like this, you see. What it yeah. was is that I was saying that there's a percentage of very fat people who, when they go out at night, don't make an effort. They've given up. And I was saying, if you've given up, please don't come to string first. If you go to a whole club crowded out with arse women, then it's, uh, you, you wish <laughs> they'd keep their fat features at home, really. Well, you see, that's where the hypocrisy came in, you know. Everyone was got, I mean, everyone was saying, oh, this is terrible. And I said, okay, what do you think, what do you think about this wonderful word, which I hate, called politically correct? Oh, dear. I refuse PC. to be politically I say be impolitically incorrect. Okay, I'll go for that one, too. Yeah, it's the ugly ones that are the problem, I guess. <laughs> you should read some of the bear what they've called me, man. Wow. Yeah. Is it because they don't actually fit with the image of uh, the, the high-profile people, the Plunties, the Ciders, all the rest of them in there? Is it because they don't actually fit with those kind of people? Look, I save a lot of people from having a miserable night by refusing them entrance. In other words, they can come in and feel really out of it. But out of it in the bad sense. You know? so we're not yeah. talking MDA. We're talking. No, no, I'm, I'm just in the wrong feeling place. down. Yeah. Oh my God! You know, you feel right down your leg, and you find even your calves are fat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know what it's like. What about someone like Madonna? Say she wanted to come and she'd grown a little blubber sack around the coccyx, would you let her in? Of course. Are you crazy? I'm a, you know, any celebrity and a star is a star. The public doesn't look at a star and think anything except here is a star. I think Madonna is fantastic. Isn't That's she great? great? I, I yeah. think she's incredible. She just, I mean, what she does for women. And Apart she, she has the sense to shape up. I mean, she goes jogging, she makes her body nice and she's a real hard body. And she and gives herself over to a business. She wouldn't it life. be disgraceful if she allowed herself to go to seed and became like some piece of baobab tree so wide Isn't she couldn't get around sad? it? We're talking to old age brackets here with Bridget Bardo, who was the oh. absolute sexiest thing on yeah. two legs. And now, in the 60s. what a bloater. Oh, so sad, isn't it? Seriously? If I was it, she should have. She should have topped herself. Sure. But well, that's why I don't want to be a lady. Thanks, Douglas. Just to let you know that the Traffic Jam Society will be alleviating any problems caused by the train strikes this week. It was nice to see them out of the bank holiday. That's for the entertainment of those stuck in traffic. The members of the society, which includes celebrities like Roy Hudd, Jeremy Isaacs and Pam Ayres, will dance naked to traditional folk songs and throw beans and rice to beleaguered drivers. You could take Coke. I mean, just imagine a Coke, a 100-metre Coke race. You'd have... Uh, <laughs> they'd all be on the start. The starter would um, put his gun up in the air and then someone would say... Hey, who says you're in charge? Kid is outing. No drugs here apart from the crack I give him as payment. Today's Wednesday, the 31st of August, 1994. And today, I would like to out Fred Truman. Mr. Truman is a barrel-gotted professional tosser and has been a practicing friend of Dorothy for as long as I've known him. Ah. Make me feel warm, man. I'm not feeling good, but that makes me feel warm. It stops me being annoyed. I got annoyed this week with macho lizard owners. You know those sad people that go around with a massive great big lizard on a lead just to show they're macho? I hate those people. They're big lizards.